So, like we did with the apple body, we're going to select some colors from our reference image. That'll help us. First of all, let's click the darker shade of the inner core. And hmm, that's a bit light. Let's just tweak that. Let's make it a bit darker. Okay, let's try that for now. And we're going to drag that into our swatches. And then we're going to select the lighter color. And again, drag that into our swatches. These will help for later. Right. So let's click on our left core section. And we're going to come across and add a gradient. Let's just add this one by default, the fade to black. And let's, cust let's come into our gradient panel and customize this. So let's first of all double click on that color. If it's currently on color, come down to swatches. That'll help. And let's select that dark green we had there. That'll do. So then click off. And then click on the other node. Double click. And let's select our whiter green. That'll do. Then click off. Uh, bear in mind, uh, we need to change that opacity back up to 100%. That's good. Right. Let's click off that. Now this this isn't exactly how I want it. The dark is going from left to right. I want that dark to come from top to bottom. So let's click on that core and grab our gradient tool. And you can see what's going on here. So let's change that. Click and drag. Let's tweak that. Click and drag. Maybe coming in from there. And that'll do for now. That'll do for now. It's looking okay. Right, let's select our other section, our other core section, and without having to do all that process again, we can be cheeky and grab the eyedropper tool and select our left core. Boom! It's apply that gradient, but the gradient um, angle is slightly different, so let's address that. Click the core area, grab our gradient tool, and let's just drag, click and drag that. Once again, maybe there you go. That's looking, looking good to me. We are almost done. We don't have too much left to go. We've got what the drop shadow, the apple core, and a few lighting effects and some tweaks to the colors. Now next, I'm going to try and emulate this little light kiss here that is showing a bit of curvature, this sort of biconcave shape in the top of the apple. Now, to do this, again, we're going to use the same sort of technique as we used to, to get that apple core. We're going to come over and we want to get our pen tool and quickly make some points bang 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 very easy let's get rid of that white and we're gonna get our convert anchor point give ourselves a nice curve here let's see what we're doing so give ourselves a nice curve nice curve whoops very smooth, very smooth indeed. So there we go. We've copied what looks to be the curve of that apple there. I'm happy with that. Let's fill that in. Fit to canvas. And again, we're going to select that space and select the apple body. Copy, move down, and paste. We're going to bring these two together. Let's try and see how that's going to work. Looks just looks just fine. Let's place it on. This time, we're going to use a different tool in the Pathfinder. Last time, we used the Intersect. This time, we are going to use the Exclude. Notice what happens when we click that. We are getting rid of this area here. So what it's done, it is cut the negative space out. So we don't want this bit here. So with the 
white with the direct selection tool rather we're going to select that top area and delete it oh you got to be careful here where that shape met the apple body let's just smooth this out tweak that little node there whoops let's just bring it down slightly that'll do that'll do okay so we've got it let's select that object cut that object and before we do anything let's make a new layer so on the top new layer let's call it apple shine do nicely and command v for paste control v for paste on the pc and paste it and paste it on top Next up, we're going to grab that gradient, the same gradient as we did before. Click it once. And what we're going to do is we're going to change this black to white. And we're going to change we're going to change the gradient direction. There you go. Just going to tweak it slightly to get this little light shine. And it just takes a little bit of playing with until we get something that looks like that. That'll do for now. And we can again change the opacity of the white. Click that. Actually, leave it 100% for now because what we're going to do, we're going to select that Apple Shine. And instead of tweaking the color, we're just going to come to the transparency panel. And we're going to push that down a little, and that'll that'll do. We'll use that. Okay, so that that's looking okay. Um, the thing is, at the moment, that gradient, we want to fade it into zero, but it's got a tendency to make it kind of grey. So if I double click on that and just choose one of the greens, we just you can see it's just buffing up that transition. So we keep it nice and clean. Okay, so that's the apple shine. Now for the apple stalk. So let's get rid of that object. We won't be needing that anymore. Let's zoom in by pressing Z, hotkey. Zoom into that stalk. Let's grab our pen tool and quickly draw out some points here. It's a bit annoying. Okay. And let's grab our converter anchor point and just round off some of these corners. Looking okay. Right. Let's select that. Let's fill it. And let's bring it across to our apple. Not too shabby. And again, Let's grab some colors from our image here. Let's get that brown. That'll do nicely. Maybe let's make it a bit darker. And drag it into our swatches. Select that green. Drag it into our swatches. And yeah, let's keep it like that. We only need the two colors. Let's look at our stalk. Select the stalk. Let's give it a gradient. Let's edit that gradient. Select the brown, click off, next color, click once, let's tweak that opacity, push it up to 100, double click this time and select our green. And that's looking pretty subtle, not too bad at all. So that really, that pretty much sorts out our apple stalk. Last and not least, Let's do our drop shadow. I'm going to create this drop shadow very simply. I'm going to grab my ellipse, grab the ellipse tool, and draw ourselves a little ellipse, roughly about the same size as our reference image. And we're going to change it from brown to black there. And let's go to effect. Blur, 
Gaussian blur. And let's give that a blur of around 20. Let's just round it off. And there you have it. A blurred drop shadow. Let's drag this over to our apple. It's on top at the moment, but we're just going to use it for positioning purposes. That's looking good. But also a bit dark, so let's change the opacity to around 50%. Nice and light. And we're going to select that shadow and copy and paste. And we're going to do this because we're going to double up the drop shadow because, as you can see, there's, there's some light shadow and there's some really dark shadow there where it gets a bit more dense. So I've got my copied shadow. It's going to make it a little bit smaller. And also push this up to 100%. There you go, make that really dark. And let's put it there. Just where it is, whoops. Put it, let's move it slightly with the cursor keys. Let's put it there, it's looking good. Click and hold to select those two shadows. Object, arrange, center back. And there it is. Still not entirely happy with the darkness of that. Even though it's 100%, it's still not dark enough. Let's try something here. Let's move that down. Could just copy and paste that. Layer these up. Yeah. Layer them up a little bit. There's no harm in that. Put it back. Object, arrange, centre back. And that's it. Yeah, that'll do for now. That's looking pretty good. So that's our drop shadow. And that's our finished apple. Now, all that's left to do is have a play around with the colours. Let's have a look what I did earlier. Let's command cut that. And move over to another artboard. Earlier I had a little play around and I created myself a red apple. Very versatile. And there it is. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. I hope that you uh, benefit from some of the techniques we used, specifically the Pathfinder tool. I find that um, that can be really helpful when we cut out areas from, from shapes and it really helped us out in this scenario. Well again, thanks for watching and good luck and I'll see you next time.